Hey all, welcome to Alley Cat Customs. I'm getting this block ready to send in the machine shop. So right now I'm deburring this block. So come on along and I'll show y'all how I do it. When you are devoting a lot of time and money to build an engine, attention to detail is how you maximize every dollar you throw at it. And deburring and cleaning up the rough spots on the engine is a sometimes overlooked step, but it is a very important step to get the best results. I have a few tools I'll be using for this process. I have a few hand files and an air power die grinder that I'll be using um, some sanding rolls from a port and polish kit, as well as some deburring bits to get this block cleaned up. Before I get started, uh, let me say, when you are doing something like this, it is best to take your time, be patient, and remember, less is more. You don't wanna go hog wild and grind too far, or you will end up cutting into a, a, a water jacket or an oil passage and end up turning your block into scrap iron. So with that said, let's get started. Cast iron blocks like this have a lot of rough spots and casting flashing left, left behind from the process of casting and machining the block into a, fi a finished piece. Since this block is a mass produced piece, very little attention to detail is given to cleaning up all the flashing and rough edges, unless they're in a critical or machined area of the block. This is fine for a bone stock engine that, you, that will spend most of its life uh, driving you back forth to work or to the grocery store, um, but it can cause some problems if you're throwing some power at it and really pushing the engine hard. Deburning a block is a very important step in prepping it for a performance build for a few reasons. First, there are times uh, when cast and flashing can cause stress rider, risers, uh, which leads to cracks, uh, which can be very disastrous for your engine. You never want sharp pointed angles on anything that will be pulled or twisted on. Uh, cracks form in sharp corners much easier than they do in uh, smooth, smooth radius bends. Uh, so smoothing and cleaning up any corners can actually make your block stronger. Second, any flash that you see can chip off and fall into the pan, and who knows where else it can end up bouncing around in your engine. You definitely do not want small chunks of cast iron floating around your, in your engine. As you add power and spin up the RPMs, the harmonics inside the engine change, so things that wasn't a problem in grandma's old grocery getter can be a big problem when you start hammering on your engine. So. Cracks and chipped off pieces are a real possibility. When you're working your way through the engine and you're grinding off all the uh, cast and flashing you see, a lot of the uh, spots, um, it's dual purpose. You're, you're grinding the flashing off to save uh, any stress risers or any, any places that cracks can develop. Uh, radius in the bends and stuff to get those places cleaned up. But you're also, especially like in the lifter valleys or inside the block in places, uh, you're also able to help uh, oil drain back in the in the block to get the oil to come back down into, into the pan so it can be uh, recycled back in the engine. Um, the big block Chevrolet doesn't have a whole lot of bad spots where um, oil collects because of the cast and flashing or, or spots like that. Um, but it does have the, the four center holes uh, in the lifter valley and you got pretty good cast and flashing. M mine wasn't too terribly bad. Uh, so I just, I just cleaned it all up and uh, I run my finger across it to make sure I can feel that it's got pretty, pretty uh, good and smooth uh, transitions on everything. And you know, as as I rolled it over and look for other cast uh, cast in markings inside the engine, uh, some engines they have terrible amounts of cast and flashing everywhere inside the block. They'll have extra drain back holes. Um, the big block Chevrolets they have them on the factory heads. You'll see. Um, the drain back holes in the heads and stuff will have a lot of flashing in those, but the block is pretty straightforward. So I did the, the four uh, center holes in the uh, lifter valley. As you're grinding along the edges of where the cylinder head mates with the block, um, take, take good care um, to try to not hit the actual uh, surface where the head gasket is. You do not want to take material away from there and then have to uh, fight with trying to get the head the head decked and try to lose material there. Um, so you take, be real careful across that on on the angles 
uh, trying to get along the edges on the uh, on the inside where the lifter valley is and also along the outside uh, you just you just want to kind of soften the edge and round the edges on it um, after you get the engine back from the machine shop uh, you may actually if they deck the head uh, you, you will probably feel a little bit more of an edge on it again and you can uh, use a, a hand file or you can if you're confident with a uh, actual like deburring bit you can go back through it and clean it up um, I, I like to do it beforehand because I feel like if I if I mess up a <laughs> unmachined surface it's not that it's not that uh, big of a deal because uh, I don't have to pay for it twice to get it fixed after I screw it up uh, but just take your time on that and make sure you just do not hit that machine surf, uh, surface on it where the head gasket mates um, I cleaned around my um, water jacket passages uh, there was some flashing inside of those I didn't want to make the uh, jackets any bigger but I just cleaned the edges up as I went along so that uh that will help try not to have any kind of flash and get inside the inside the uh, water jackets and floating around while I had my engine block on the uh, table I went ahead and um, shaved down the the edges on my on my bell housing um, anywhere there's a, a radius radius edges if it's got a sharp edge on it I run my finger on it. If it feels sharp, sharp to my finger, I try to round. I try to round those areas off. Um, any anywhere, so you can, it's, if you can hang a finger on it and it feel and it feels sharp, uh, sharp on the edge of your finger, then you can uh, try to round that off. And anywhere you see a see a bend that is kind of a hard radius or, or a sharp corner, I uh, try to try to soften that out uh, along the bell housing. I did that while I was on the uh, engine stand. Then I got on engine stand. I uh, did the rest of the rest of the engine. When you roll the engine upside down and you're looking in towards where the crank the crank and rods would go, um, you see you see the surfaces around the pockets where the crank and the uh, the rods and pistons go in into the bottom of the cylinder bores. Uh, you can you can break the uh, edges. You can soften the edges along the bottom of the cylinder bores. Be very careful not to take up too much material on that. Uh, but you you can round off on it. I personally didn't do it because I have an angle angle die grinder and it's just so hard to get in these tight places. There's several places that I wished I could have reached a little better, but my my inline die grinder um, is broken and I did not get a replacement for it. So I did the best I could with my angle angle grinder and with my Sasquatch hands, I can't really <laughs> move move in places that, that somebody with smaller hands and, and an inline grinder could work. Uh, but I did the best I could. Um, I grind along the edges where the main caps go uh, on the webbing on either end, uh, kind of break the edge on the sides of the of where the bearings, the main bearings and stuff go. Uh, I do not uh, break the edge where the uh, main caps locate to the block. Uh, I leave those alone. I, I, I don't I don't mess with those. Try to try to not have any issues there, but. As long as, as far as the edges on the on the front and the back side of the where the main caps go, uh, I soften those. Your rear main on the big block Chevrolet has radius edges on it already. You can feel, you can see those right here, and those uh, those are already radius. And it's, it's a good smooth surface. I do not touch that because the uh, rear main has a thrust bearing, and that that all locates that. So that's that's something I don't mess with. But the others. They'll have a very sharp edge, so you just kind of, kind of break it to where it, you don't feel your finger hang on the edge. Um, they're actually pretty sharp. Mine was pretty sharp on the on the edges, so I broke those down a little bit. Once I grind the block where the main uh, main bearings go, uh, I take the um, main caps and I hold them. Uh, I did it on the with them with them sitting on the block. Uh, my table was full of stuff, and I and I didn't didn't feel like resetting. It's it's m much safer to put the main caps on the table and grind them on the table than what I was doing. Uh, but I didn't, I just didn't want to take the time to clean my table off. So I, I, I grind along the edges, clean the bolt holes up. Uh, you can tell on the, on the uh, outside of the main caps, there's, there's a um, cast and flashing along, along each one of them. So I just broke that down and, and smoothed that off, get the, get the sharp edge off of that. And then on the edge of the, where the main uh, bearings go, I rounded, rounded those edges off to get them, uh, get them to where they wouldn't hang your finger as you as you uh, run your finger across them. 
So everything just to try to get all the sharp edges to round them off so you, so you don't have um, any, kind of, any kind of sharp edges that, that can be a stress riser. Uh, you, don't, you don't wanna have any, any breaks from that. And uh, it's also a safety feature. So, that's, so you don't end up cutting yourself while you're working on it. On the rear main, I ground around where the um, oil pump dry shaft goes through. Um, it, it ends up with, uh, the way it's machined, it has two points around where they kind of uh, machine out the, the hole for the oil pump dry shaft. So I, I broke that edge off, off and cleaned it up so that that wouldn't be, possibly break off. One side of mine was already broke off. Um, it's, it's normally points on both sides, but one side of mine had already been broke off. So I cleaned that side up and then shaved the other side down a little bit just to, just to uh, try to not have any, any issues there and uh, made it, cleaned it up best I could on that. Uh, the, the rear main don't really have a whole lot you can do. You can go around the edges of your um, oil pump where the oil pump mating surface is and just anywhere, anywhere you, can, you can clean up uh, will we'll, uh, be, a, be a better setup than, than it is because there's some pretty sharp edges along, along all the main caps. Another good reason to deburr your engine is because sunspots on the engine can be very sharp. This can cause injuries to you as you manhandle your engine. As the saying goes, in a human body, air goes in and out and blood goes around and around and any deviation in that is a problem. So I definitely do not want to get cut while I'm working on the engine. So softening these edges and sharp spots uh, will ensure that I don't get a leaky hand or find some surprise wounds when I uh, use some brake clean later. Another good reason to clean up the rust spots on the exterior of the block is so that paint has a better chance to stick. Since you're building the engine to run good, you might as well make it look good too, since it's the crown jewel inside the engine bay. So along the outside of, of this block, um, there's some bad casting spots on, on all four corners. Uh, you can tell on the, uh, around the um, oil filter boss, there was, there was a bad casting flashing along there, casting lines on that side and on the front corner, um, heading down towards the timing chain cover and on the passenger side of the block at the bell housing and also going down towards the um, fuel pump uh, mountain boss, there was, there was a bad cast in lines there. So um, there were some sharp edges as well as just bad spots where paint doesn't like to stick. So I took, a, took some time and effort to clean those up and uh, just grind them down and uh, just, you know, you can do more or less as, as on this part. I, I took a little time to clean mine up. Uh, I want to want this engine to look pretty since it's the the rest of my truck is uh, pretty ugly. And I love when I take the hood off and people see a, a, a you know a beautiful big block sitting in an old ratty muscle truck. So um, it's it just work work uh, along the edge uh, where the all the cast and flashing is, and uh, you get those casting lines uh, taken down and it. The end result, it'll be it'll be really nice once you get paint on it. It paint will stick pretty good. So that's a that's a dual purpose of cleaning, especially the outside of the block, because you don't want to have any sharp edges that that can you know cut your hand or cut hoses or wires or anything you may have close to the block. And also, you want to look good, so uh, grinding out grinding the places down and cleaning them up works pretty well. So that's what I did. So as you can see from this video, this is a kind of tedious job and it can take several hours to do properly, but the end results will be worth the trouble. I usually take this time to really just go over the engine and make sure that there's no bad problems or anything before I send it to the machine shop. I would rather find those problems now than have the machinist call me and say, hey dude, this block ain't usable. If I find a problem now, I won't be out the extra time and the money of letting somebody else tell me that the block's bad. So if, if I can find the problem, it makes me feel a whole lot better before I send it. And if he finds something after he, after he looks kind of like a proofreading your work. So I like, I like to spend that time to at least just get acquainted with the engine and, and just check everything over I can. Um, but now that I'm done with this uh, step, I'm gonna move on to the next. Uh, so I'll end this video here. I hope y'all enjoyed this. And if you did, make sure you hit that thumbs up, leave a comment and make sure you subscribe so you can keep up with all of what I'm doing right here at Alicat Customs.